We're now going to work another problem for IV administration rate using minutes. We are to infuse 40 milligrams of Pepsid. That is our order. We're going to go to our drug book and find the recommended administration rate and the recommended volume for dilution. We see that our pharmacist has sent up Pepsid 40 milligrams diluted in 60 milliliters of normal saline. We have checked our drug book and found that the recommended time for infusion of 40 milligrams of Pepsid is 20 minutes. And I have verified that the volume that it is diluted in, 60 milliliters, is correct. So we're going to infuse Pepsid, 40 milligrams diluted in, 60 milliliters of normal saline over 20 minutes. Now we're going to work our problem. We take our volume, which is 60 milliliters, and it is our numerator, over our amount of time, which is 20 minutes. In this problem, we have to put in our extra step. There are 60 minutes in every one hour. And then we are going to get that this equals 3600 over 20. Now, 3600 divided by 20 equals 180 milliliters per hour. And that is the rate that we will infuse our Pepsid at, 180 milliliters per hour. Let's go back up and visit the steps of our problem one more time. Our volume, 60 milliliters, is our numerator over our denominator, 20 minutes. We have to put in our extra step because our time is in minutes, and we say there are 60 minutes in every hour. Remember, we have to be able to cross our minutes out so that we're left with milliliters per hour. Are you ready to calculate drops per minute now for IV rates? When would you need to do this? When your primary or secondary line is to gravity, where might this occur? It often occurs in the ER and in labor and delivery, and sometimes when you're working at smaller hospitals. Where would you find the drop factor? The drop factor is found on your IV tubing package. What do you do if your primary line or your secondary line tubing is already in the patient's room and you don't have the package? You go to the supply room on that floor and you get a package of unopened primary or secondary tubing you verify that it's the same, and you look on the package to see what the drop factor is. Make sure that you have the correct tubing. If you need to calculate for a primary or main line, make sure that that's the tubing that you're looking up, or the package that you're looking at for your drop factor. Likewise, if you're going to infuse an IV piggyback and use a secondary tubing, make sure that it's the secondary tubing that you're getting the drop factor for. Now, the formula for drops per minute is milliliters, or your volume is your numerator, over your time in minutes. Then you put your drop factor over one milliliter. On your package, it will tell you the drop factor is, we'll say for example, 10 drops per milliliter, or 15 drops per milliliter. The 10 drops per milliliter, that is your drop factor. You would put 10 drops, as your numerator, over the one milliliter. Then you would say your milliliters times drops, your time times one milliliter for drops per minute. You need to come out with drops per minute. When putting your drop factor, plugging this step in, your drop factor always goes on top, one milliliter always on the bottom. You need for your milliliters to cancel out so that you're left with drops per minute. Now let's work a problem and solve for drops per minute. We have an order that says give vancomycin 500 milligrams every 24 hours. 
We get our medication from pharmacy and we have vancomycin, 500 milligrams, diluted in 200 milliliters of normal saline, 200 milliliters. That will be our volume. We get our drug book and we look, we look up the recommended time for infusing vancomycin. And it says it should be infused over two hours. Now next, we need to get our secondary tubing and we get our package of secondary tubing and we look on the package and on the package it has our drop factor. The drop factor for our secondary tubing in this case is 15 drops per milliliter. Now let's work a problem. First we put our volume which is 200 milliliters. That is our amount or volume to be infused. That is our numerator, our volume. We put that over the number of minutes, which is going to be 120 minutes. Two hours times 60 minutes equals 120 minutes. So our volume, 200 milliliters over our time, 120 minutes. Remember now we put in our drop factor, 15 drops per one milliliter. Our milliliters cross each other out, cancel each other out, and we're left with 200 times 15 equals 3,000 divided by 120. Again, at this point we can get our calculator and say 3,000 divided by 120 or we can cancel out one set of zeros and say 300 divided by 12. Our answer will be 25 and that's 25 drops per minute. Remember that anytime you're administering an IV rate at gravity and calculating drops per minute, you will need a second hand either on your watch or know that there's a clock with a second hand available in the patient's room and you would count a drop factor of 25 drops per minute. And that's how you would administer an IV per gravity. Let me show you one more way to work the same problem that we just worked. Some people like to put all of their steps for dimensional analysis in the problem. If you remember the first time we worked it, I converted my hours to total minutes and I said 200 milliliters, my volume, over total minutes, 120. The other way to work it, <clears throat> excuse me, for those of you that like to have every step in dimensional analysis, you take your volume, 200 milliliters over two hours, your recommended infusion time, times one hour over 60 minutes, then plug in your drop factor of 15 drops per one ml. <clears throat> now, in this case, you put one hour on the top because you want to be left with drops per minute. So you need for your hours to cancel out, your milliliters to cancel out, so you're left with drops per minute. You still come up with the same answer, which is going to be 3,000 divided by 120, or 300 divided by 12, which will equal 25 drops per minute.